practitioners, Zali Naseh, and I'm uh, happy to be joined today, this morning, by uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed Abdulrahman Hashim, uh, Professor of Endodontics at Ayn Shams University and uh, in clinical practice in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, Dr. Hashim, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Dr. Anand. It's so wonderful to be with you today. Uh, Dr. Hashim's case was published just this morning in the Endolit case of the month. Congratulations. It's a beautiful and interesting and very technically challenging case that you've accomplished. And I just wanted to uh, spend a couple minutes here, Dr. Hashim, interviewing you and uh, getting uh, your feedback about the case that you did. Now, I'm just going to quickly go over the uh, background of this uh, case, as you explained to me. Uh, and uh, this was a case tooth number 19 and 20 uh, that, that, are, that you did the testing on. And tooth number 19 had a previous root canal that you went in the tooth and you found out that there was a, a big broken instrument in the, one of the mesial canals, in the mesolingual canal specifically, and then you went about removing it and you did a wonderful job. It's a very interesting way you went about removing uh, this, um, this broken file. Can you briefly explain uh, how you went about removing that broken instrument? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, this patient came, came to me. He was uh, having uh, pain, tender to percussion, and pain or palpation related to tooth number 19 on the radiograph. Uh, we found um, uh, not very good root canals. The obturation was not extended to the working lens. Uh, there was uh, spaces around um, voids in the fillings, and uh, the mesolingual canal was having overextended radiopaque structure. At the beginning, I thought that uh, this is an overextended uh, single cone metaverse or something, but knowing that uh, uh, nickel titanium alloys, especially when we have greater table files, usually we have almost the same radio opacity as metaverse. Uh, and looking under the microscope, I found that there is uh, this shiny spot of uh, broken ends. So, um, uh, also the mesolingual canal had like a pass beside the broken ends and it extended to a perforation at the apical one third during the previous attempt of removing this broken ends or to bypass this broken ends. The decision was made to remove the broken instrument. Staging platform has been made using the modified gate splitting rail, and then traffic around the head of the broken instrument using the ultrasonics uh, up to three millimeters, exposing three millimeters of the uh, broken instrument head. And then I used stainless steel tube. And you know, we have a lot of stainless steel tubes with different diameters, which is present to the market. So we choose a proper size. We cut it and we fit it to the head of the broken instrument. It should be a little bit loose. And then we bought an edge file of appropriate size inside the stainless steel tube to engage or to wedge the broken instrument inside the stainless steel tube. I used the needle holder uh, to rotate. You know, when we try, if we had a file like this, which is overextended beyond the apex, and it's firmly seated or firmly anchored inside the canal. If you try to pull the whole assembly with the long axe or in one direction outside, mostly it is going to be loose from the head of the broken elf. So what I had, that I had my needle holder and I rotated in anti-clockwise direction. So we are going to unscrew the file out from the canal instead of just pulling it out from the canal. This can work in a lot of cases, you know. Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful idea, I must say. That, 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 that's very uh, well thought out. So you basically had a custom-made stainless tube that fit 